the curse of the goat head. There are many things in our natural world that should be feared, or at least respected. But then, there are those things which are feared and probably don't need to be. But the great outdoors has all kinds of hazards, most of which can be avoided with a little knowledge and awareness. These might include those things that want to kill you, and worse yet, the things that just want you to suffer. I'll explain why this may be worse a little later on. Fear. Justified. Take the big old hairy tarantula spider, for example. Many might find such a beastie and turn and run. Some might even add a good scream just for effect. But the tarantula spider is not likely to want to bite you. They'd much rather just avoid you. But even if you are somehow able to convince one that biting you is its best course of action, it's not likely to hurt you too bad. Though you probably have nightmares about it, the bite is about as dangerous as a bee sting, which is really only dangerous when you're allergic. And unlike bees, wasps, and other yellow and black menaces, the tarantula is not likely to recruit an army of friends and chase you down just to prove their point. In fact, common bees generally won't do that either. But to be sure, some bees are just class A jerks. The great outdoors has more to throw at us. You've got the snakes and the apex predators and the bears and the wildcats and several varieties of creepy crawlies like spiders and scorpions. However, out in the country, the stuff that you can fall off of, get drowned in, or just spend too much time trying to experience without a good clean source of water, are much more likely to leave you in a bad way. But if you take a few precautions, your odds of coming out of the wild unscathed are quite good. Maybe better than a lot of the bigger cities. If ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Here's some examples. Here in the desert southwest, doing stuff like having extra fresh water available, keeping a roll of duct tape in the glove box, you can fix anything with that stuff, and having a map or GPS unit will help a lot. Sunscreen, it is a necessity, unless you like the dried up lobster look. Keeping an eye on the weather is really necessary. Watch the sky, and if it starts raining anywhere in the area, even if it's several miles away, it doesn't need to be raining on you. Be warned. What might be coming at you down that formerly dry wash? It could be an unanticipated 35 mile per hour wall of mud, rocks, and cactus, and stumps with a little water. So, <laughs> not a good thing. There are other self-preservation habits we desert dwellers have learned, like always shake your shoes out before you put them on. You never know what kind of critter has crawled into them. And this is true of hats and caps and gloves, too. And uh, shake out your clothing before putting it on. Oh, and always shake out the sleeping bag before you get in it. Seems there's a lot of indigenous residents in the desert that Appreciate a warm sleeping bag, especially on a cool night. Knowledge is power. Preparation calms fear. And then there's the stuff that looks harmless, but you find out is lying to you. And there are several of these. Cactus? Cactus is no surprise. It warns you. Hey, this is my space and I'm not sharing. It sticks its point of little spines right out there in the open where you can see them, but some folks are so dumb that's not enough of a warning. Okay, most folks are not that dumb, but I am. After 50 years, I can still feel the spines of that pricking pear cactus piercing through my canvas sneakers and into the ball and arch of my right foot. You really can't be angry with cactus. At least it warns you. And so does the cocklebur or the thistle. This one hates us all.
But of the innocent pretenders, this one is the notorious nightmare. The only one you really need to look out for, the true torturer of man and beast, it is the Southern European puncture vine. This nasty little bit of fodder is cute, low lying green, succulent looking, and kind of leafy, with small bright yellow flowers. It looks kind, nice, and sweet, and inviting even. But do not be deceived. This is no harmless little plant. It is noxious, poisonous, and mean. And it's packing a concealed weapon. And its entire purpose for existence is to puncture your skin, inflame the entry wound with a little caustic poison, and then hold on as long as possible. Out here, we've given it a disaffectionate nickname, Goathead. The painful payload of the goat head is often affected through shoes and always through socks. Bare feet or any unprotected skin? Forget about it. That's because that concealed weapon it carries, a seed pod that when stepped on breaks apart into four pieces, each one of these sections is a multi-pronged thorn that looks like the head of a nightmarish old goat with long, sharp, barbed horns and teeth. And just for good measure, it seems the goat head is probably a close cousin of the unicorn, because it's usually got at least one spike sticking out of its nasty little forehead. Speaking of family trees, I'm betting it's got family ties back to the Lego brick, too. And if you've ever stepped on a Lego in your bare feet, you know what I'm talking about. That goat head sticker is relentless. After it falls off the plant, it can lay on the ground and remain ready for action for years. What looks like a clear and open space can, in truth, be a goat head minefield. Stepping on this one cute little deceiver of a plant, the Southern European puncture vine, or goat head, has taught more sweet little children how to explosively utter an expletive than any other single thing. In fact, even a well-disciplined adult can't help breaking out in excitable utterances. But as a general rule, the swear jar does not take in any money when you're assaulted by the goat head. Because taking a hit from a goat head is, well, let's just say it's an automatic mulling. The goat head is known to ruin a sandlot baseball game, deflate basketballs, soccer balls, pop bicycle tires, painfully destroy a good pair of flip-flops, and nasty. The play-by-play. -play. Picture this. It's at a neighborhood party in the backyard of the lovely hole. John stands up from his chair where he has been enjoying Bernie's famous barbecue ribs. John gets everyone's attention and begins, on behalf of the whole neighborhood, Bernie, these ribs are awesome. It's so wonderful that you decided to host this get together. And as he continues, John lifts his glass of lemonade to share a toast. He shifts some of his weight to his left foot and says, Bernie, you and Sharon, what the lee? Heck, son of a biscuit, all my blessed cheese and crackers. Then red-faced, he holds his hand to his mouth, <laughs> drops his lemonade and settles back into his seat, beads of perspiration appearing on his forehead. John, Bernie asks as he rushes over to help. Are you having a stroke? <laughs> John awkwardly lifts his left foot. Bertie gasps, because there it is, the terrifying truth. A perfect example of a goat head firmly embedded in the bottom of John's pinky toe. John's wife utters, I told you to wear your shoes. And she turns and shouts to everyone in the group, We've got a goat head situation here. Is there a surgeon in the house? Everyone moans in agony as they vicariously feel the pain. A pain they all know all too well. And no one takes another step because 
even in Bernie's beautiful manicured lawn, where there's one goat head, there's going to be more. <laughs> and nobody wants to be the next victim. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but it really does hurt that bad sometimes. Like Poison Ivy, the goat head looks innocent, even kind of attractive if you didn't know any better. But don't let your guard down. It will make you curse. So here's an ounce from our brief look at the horrid and deceptive goat head and its place in the natural world. And just as with any story, there are many little outs sized nuggets of wisdom to be uncovered. But for now, may I suggest just this one. There are so many things out there that seem so dangerous. But most of the time, the real danger comes from the more common, the more likely, the more run of the mill. Should you fear lightning? Sure. Shark attack? Okay. Terrorist bombs? Maybe. Serial killers? Uh, of course. Should you prepare for devastating floods or other extreme weather events? Wisdom demands it. The odds are, like beauty, joy, and blessings, most human afflictions, challenges, injuries, and failures occur within the common and everyday, not the atypical or unusual. For most of us, the greater danger exists in the things we begin to overlook because they are so common. The fall at home, the commute to work, the superglue accident. <laughs> That's all another episode. Understand your environment, and don't obsess over the salacious and overhyped. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. And if you did, you should check out some of our others. They're really good as well. And you should subscribe, and uh, hit the like button, and uh, hit the bell, and all that other stuff because it really helps us a lot. We'd appreciate it. Thanks.